then Amen. So good morning, Paul. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning, for our Sunday school. I pray that you bless each and everyone. And as we continue to um, uh, look at the book of Jude, I pray that you help me as I preach and help everyone who will be listening. Give us a humble heart, dear Lord, and we will be able to learn and to change our ways according to your word, dear Lord. May you be the one to be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're not going to read uh, Jude anymore because we've read that uh, extensively last week. And uh, we stopped at uh, verse number 10. So we'll resume that. But uh, as just a way of uh, review, we, are, we have been studying about the apostates, acts of the apostates. And we, um, we call, what do you call this? We uh, gave a definition of what an apostate is. So an apostate is a person who claims to be, uh, to be saved, who uh, uh, is a person who's in the church uh, doing supposedly the work of the Lord, uh, actually uh, mo mo um, possible that they're, uh, uh, what do you call this, involved in ministry, baptized, and doing, uh, and even preaching. But they are not really uh, saved people. Okay, these are apostates. And uh, this is something that Judas has been, um, uh, what do you call this, explaining to uh, the people. And Judas has been uh, defining and also, we see that apostates are not backsliders because even backsliders, uh, same people who backslid comes back uh, uh, to the Lord and that the Holy Spirit always wins in their lives. But we see that apostates are people who may not even backslide, backslide uh, unless they are purged by the Lord, unless the church uh, discerns who these people are, they're going to remain in the church because their goal is, uh, as, as their father, uh, the father, the devil's goal is to destroy the church. And we have also been studying from uh, verse number 1 to 10, what uh, is awaiting? What is the judgment that awaits these people? What are they doing? And um, we have uh, seen that. And I'm going to go again through that. So we'll pick it up here at verse number uh, 11. So uh, verse number 10, we saw that they are a brute beast, that they don't uh, respect authority they speak evil of, of which that they they know not that means they they try to preach the bible they try to preach the gospel but they preach it in the wrong way because they are naturally they they, they try to uh, they, they are natural people they are natural men they try to understand the word of god in their own natural mind and nobody can understand the word of god unless the holy spirit teach them the word of God. So that means an unsaved person can definitely preach the word of God, but in preaching the word of God, not knowing the, ex the exact meaning of it, without the leading of the Holy Spirit, they're actually speaking evil of these things. They're actually misinterpreting the word of God because they approach it in, in, in their natural mind. That's why as believers, we should not do the same thing. Okay? We should not approach the Word of God in a mind that is not coming from the Lord. We should let the Holy Spirit teach us the Word of God. Because even though we're saved, we can still be like them and approach the Word of God in our own wisdom. And that is something that is not only dangerous to people who don't study the Word of God, but it's also dangerous to people who study a lot. Because they become smart, they become wise in their own selves that they don't uh, um, uh, what they call this, they don't give place to the Holy Spirit teaching them anymore. So we have to be careful with that. Now, here in verse number 11, it says here, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of uh, Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsayings of Korah. Now, there are three things that has been described here. That they are, uh, have gone in the way of Cain, Okay? And they greedily, the error of Balaam for reward, and now they, are, uh, they will be perished, or they perish in the gain sayings of Korah. Because again, we have studied last week that they have an unrepentant heart. Even though you, you rebuke them, even though you show to them the word of God, even though you preach to them the truth, they will not repent from that. Because they don't have that ability, because again, they are not saved. Here in Romans chapter 2, verse 5, it says here, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart, 
treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Again, uh, uh, speaking that these people again are reserved into that kind of judgment. Now, notice here their decline. First here is the way of Cain. Meaning that they are doing the work of God the way they want to do it. Remember the story of Cain and Abel when, when God asked them to offer and Abel did what is right and, and God rejected the offering of Cain. Why? Because simply it's not the way God wants it to be done. You know, people, uh, apostate people, people who are pretending to be saved are doing the work of God the way they know how to do it. Only the, by themselves. They don't consult the word of God. They don't do God's work God's way. Basically, that's why. Because they don't know God's way. And even if they did, they don't care about that. They do it the way that they want to do it. That's why today we see that program has more uh, importance over preaching. Yeah, we, say, we see today that personal goals are above God's truth. Right? Because they try to do it God's way. When the Bible is very clear on how to do it. So simply na lang, in, in just the simple presentation of the gospel, people are trying to do it their own way. They try to put gimmicks. And, and formulas. There's no formula in doing that. You just have to read the Word of God. You have to present the Gospel plainly to people. Remember when, when Paul said, we use plainness of speech. We just tell you what it means. Basically, that's it. But people, I just read on Facebook uh, yesterday, a Friends Day. Dun sa, uh, dun sa global search. Mayroon silang Friends Day. Kung ano nung ginagawa nila. They dance, they sing, they all do all these things. And then, once, they, once everyone's tired from dancing, from jumping, from playing, they gather them together and preach the word of God. They're going to fall asleep. Because they put program, they try to use these programs to help the presentation of the gospel. There's no such thing. All right? That's why God said, do, the, uh, uh, do it my way. That's why if, even if you're, doing, uh, you're in the church, you're doing uh, God's ministry, you're preaching, you're, you're, you're doing all these things for God. If not, if you are not doing it in the way of the, the Lord wants you to do it, God, like Cain, will reject what you're doing. It does not glorify the Lord. That's why it's important to know how God wants His work to be done and then do it that way. Okay? It doesn't matter if we think we have a better idea because we don't. Yeah. Maybe we seem to have a better idea, but it's not better than what God wants, to, wants us to do it. That's why kanina po, we have been studying in Matthew and we see there that even John the Baptist started preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When John the Baptist finished his ministry, Christ picked up the same message, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Today, people don't preach that anymore. They don't preach repentance. They, they think that people are going to get offended with repentance. They think people are going to, to uh, misinterpret. Uh, they say that repentance is work. They say that repentance is not part of salvation. When the Bible is clear that preaching the gospel needs to be, uh, 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 sin has to be preached, repentance has to be preached, faith has to be preached. But people today are doing it their own way. Not only that they went They've gone in the way of Cain, doing the things their own way. But they also have uh, uh, gone into the error of Balaam. You remember his, uh, his mistake? He's a prophet, uh, supposedly, of God. He, he, he knows how to prophesy. He knows how to interpret the laws of God. But he did it for his own, uh, his own uh, benefit. He sold. Uh, he, he, he pay, uh, Balak paid him five times, at least five times, to say what he wants. Now, people today, these apostates are doing the work of God basically only for the self-benefit. Yeah. They have got into that error. They, they try to sell the, the Word of God. They try to sell the ministry. They try to make money out of this ministry. Yeah. And they see ministry as a way to have a better life. They see ministry as a way to, to be a, a better person. They see ministry to have more money. They see ministry to have more fame. They use ministry to have all of these things that they have, they want to have personally, and not really in that for what the Lord wants them to do. Again, these are uns unsaved people. That's why it's no wonder why these televangelists are getting rich by the hour. You cannot even enter their church without buying tickets that's worth a lot of money. And, and, and uh, on top of that, you still have to give them money after you, you're able to enter the church. They use the ministry because it's easy money. If you get the, the emotion of people and you're a good speaker and then you mix a little bit of Bible into it, you got their money. Because people actually, they're also natural people listening to them. They don't understand the Word of God. How, can, how on earth do people believe, the, believe these televangelists? Believe them. How on earth can one actually believe 
uh, what's that guy in Davao? Uh, Kibuloy. Para bang para sa atin, ridiculous. But for them, it is the word of God. For them, it is something that is truth. And they give their lives for it. Now, these people like Balaam, they're using the ministry to only to uh, enrich themselves. Not only that, they perish in the game sayings of Korah. Remember that these people were against Moses and that the man of God uh, and uh, uh, the man of God and they were swallowed by the earth in an earthquake. Now, this is again talking about uh, their destiny. The way they're doing it now, okay, they're enjoying maybe, maybe they're having the benefits of this, but in the future they're gonna be swallowed up. They're gonna be in judgment. God is going to judge them. Now, I, oh, now you might think that, okay, since God is gonna judge them, there's no, no need for us to speak against them. But it is a command of the Lord to, to go against them. Later on, we're gonna see that. Now, here in Jude, uh, the next two verses, in 12 and 13, it says here, These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, um, raging waves of the sea, foaming out, of, uh, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to him is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Jude is using nature to describe these people. First thing is they are spots in your feast of charity. Now, I, I tried to find out what this feast of charity is. During those times, people, uh, uh, Israelites, um, what do you call this? The people of God tried to conduct this regular feast in order to feed everyone, even the poor people. But now, these people, they join the feast. They know that the feast is for poor, poor people. Para naman, once in a while, they can eat, they can fill their bellies. But what they do is they get in, they fill their own bellies, they get drunk, and then just, just enjoy that feast. Now, wala sila pakilam kung kumpara sa anong feast na yon. Okay? They don't, para bang sila yung mga, uh, uh, pwede nang sabihin natin, uh, uh, mga, paano ba describe sa panahon natin? Uh, pwede nang ganon. Or basta, pagka, para bang kung dadaling natin sa church, we, we regularly have this fellowship for people, but then they go to this fellowship having their own agenda. Okay? Hindi sila, hindi sila, hindi sila, hindi sila nandun para makaisa sa simbahan. Okay, again, because they're there for their own agenda, for their own belly. They just try to fill themselves. You know how God described the natural man in the Bible. We read that in the book of Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, that they are just following their own lust. Whatever feels good to them. They want to eat, they eat. The way they have this, they, they, they'll, they'll get that. Because they only follow their natural way, their natural sinful nature. Okay, that's what they're doing. Not only that, they're clouds without water. Para bang, uh, uh, yung para bang kala mo ulan na, tapos lalagpas lang, wala lang. Di ba? Para bang yung, yung preacher mo, yung kala, ang gaganda ng suot, pag nagsalita, wala lang pala. Di ba? Para bang they promise a lot, but then you, 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 try to, you try to scrutinize their message. You see that there's really no substance in that. You know, they, they boast by their, their eloquent speech. They boast by the way they dress. They boast uh, in all these things, but if you examine their message, there's really nothing in that. They're clouds without water. They're easily blown by the wind. Diba? Naalala ko naman si, si Grace Grace. Nothing but Grace. Diba? Napakagaling magsalita. Eke? Eke? Magaling siya sa ganun. But, you examine his message, there's no substance. Wala po. It's always, it always points to himself. It always points to his benefit. It always points to their own agenda. Kaya nga po yung mga, yung mga ga, uh, apostates, mga kapatid, hindi po sila magpipreach na, na something that will require them to do something. Laging ang preaching nila ay pakabig. Kaya pag inanalyze mo yung preaching nila, palaging, ano yung dap, ang, palaging ang challenge, anong dapat mong gawin ngayon? Para sa Diyos. And eventually, para sa tao ng Diyos. Laging doon ang punta nun. Laging ang punta nun, paano protektahan ang sarili nila and how to justify what they're doing. They're clouds without water. They look promising, they sound promising, but it's nothing. Okay? The, these trees whose fruit withereth. Sabi pa ng Bible, they're twice dead. Uh, uh, and, and, and fruit here, it can mean uh, sa kanilang ginagawa o yung mga tao na, 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 kanilang na sumusunod sa kanila. Uh, if, if we interpret it that way, these people who are following uh, apostate people are also nothing. They're also doing what is wrong in the, in the sight of God. And also, if you say that these fruits are their works, it will amount to nothing. What they're doing has no eternal value at all. Nothing. Again, going back to the reason because they are not saved. 
They are raging waves of the sea. They are uncontrollable. Hindi mo sila, uh, they, yung mga ginagawa nila, it's like they're just noisy, and they're chaotic. Hindi mo sila makontrol, hindi mo sila kaya talagang pagsabihan. Because they have, they, they, they will do what they want. Kaya nga po kahit anong gawin mo, kaya nga sinasabi nila, go to them, talk to them personally, there's no use. Because they know what they're doing. They know the, wrong, the, the things that they're doing wrong. But they continue doing this anyway because they cannot be controlled. Not especially not by the Word of God. They don't care about that. Kahit na gamit mo pa, verse after verse after verse, they don't. They will not care about that. They can explain away every verse. Okay, I remember again, uh, na nga, nababalik tayo kay Grace Grace. Na-explain ko na last week. Naalala ko na-explain ko na last week. Uh, next, they are wandering stars. Wala silang direction. And, of course, even the, the congregation that they lead, wala rin direction yan. Wala rin kung, kung ano ang pakinabang, kung ano ang practical, kung ano yung maganda yun ang ginagawa. That, that's the God of pragmatism. They don't have a direction in life. They don't even have a direction in their message. They don't even have a direction in... in, in uh, they're, not, they're not bringing uh, the church into the direction of God. Why? Again, they're not saved people. What do we expect? Alright, that's, uh, that's why in churches you see the programs are based on pragmatism. The doctrines are based on pragmatism. Why do they teach first fruits? Pragmatism. Kailangan ng pera eh. Kailangan ng building. Kailangan ng funds. So kailangan natin ituro yung first fruits. But it's not the way of the Bible. It's just practical. Eh, you know, kailangan maganda ang itsura ng pastor eh. Bigyan ng magandang damit. Kailangan maganda yung sasakyan ng pastor eh. Kasi yung iba, yung iba nga hindi pastor, maganda sasakyan si pastor pa kaya. Pragmatism. Diba? Practical kailangan. The, the, no Bible at all. Okay, they are wandering stars. They don't have any direction. Now, in verse 14, Enoch describing the, uh, their doom. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of this, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of saints. Now, nowhere in the Bible can you see this prophecy. Actually, Jude talks about two things na hindi natin mahanap sa Bible. The first thing, last week we studied uh, uh, the angel, the archangel battling over the body of Moses. Wala po sa Bible. Hindi natin makita. And then here again, this prophecy of Enoch, wala rin po yun sa Bible. Hindi rin natin makita. And the only explanation, a lot of people try to explain it away. And I believe the explanation is very simple because it's, he's inspired. The Holy Spirit told him to write this down. So even though we cannot find this in the Bible, this happened and these are true. Now, Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of this, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to what? Execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. You notice here the description? They're ungodly. They have ungodly deeds, ungo they, uh, things that they have ungodly committed, and their speech are of ungodly sinners. Kaya nga po, malalaman mo kung sino sila. Verse 16. Ano sila? These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust because they, ha they, have, they cannot walk after the Spirit. Wala sila nun. Walking after their own lust. And their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Napakaliwanag po ng Bible. Hindi po natin pwedeng masabi na hindi, that we have not been warned. Kaya po pagka naloko ka ngayon, hindi ka nalang nagbabasa ng Bible. Kaya pag naloko ka ngayon, hindi ka nalang kasi talaga nag-aaral ng Bible. The warning is, the Bible is full of warning of these people. Uh, uh, Paul warned Timothy about this. Uh, Peter did not, uh, in, in the book of 2 Peter, warned us about these people. And we and, and kasalanan lang natin kung tayo maluloko pa. Notice here that uh, um, the, the, the Bible is full of, full of uh, what do you call this, uh, a warning about them. Later on, we're going to see that. But notice, notice here, kanilang description. They are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust. Their mouth speaketh great swelling words. Wala naman kasi maniniwala sa kanila kung di sila marunong uto, kung di sila marunong magsalita, of course. Having men's persons in admiration of because of these, people love them. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, kung ikaw ay pastor at mahal ka ng mundo, mag-isip ka. People love you. Why? Because of what they see. Because of the glamour of ministry. Because of the way you speak. But they don't love you because of the message you're preaching. Yeah. You know, I, 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 can, I can say today that people, sa panahon natin, in the context of our time, that people who preach plain truth are not loved by a lot of people. 
they will not be loved. Why? Because the Bible, the truth of the Bible, is not, hindi natin may kita yan sa maraming tao. It's in the minority. Hindi po ganun karami ang naniniwala sa katotohanan ng Bible. Kaya pag pinitch mo yung katotohanan at kontra sa kanila, they will not love you. It's impossible. Why? Especially if they don't have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit cannot confirm that into their hearts. Kukontrahin ka lang nila. That's why the people who they love are people who say that, Hey, you are a good person. Uh, God has a plan for you. Uh, using all these Old Testament verses to say that you're gonna be rich someday. Para pong para sa atin, basic. But again, these are natural men. They cannot understand that. Now, here in verse number 16, I'm sorry, I did not note, note this. Okay, Jude, uh, verse number 16. It says here, these are murmurs. Ah, oh, nabasa ko na rin pala. Okay, here in verse number 16. And, and the next, the following verses then, now from verse 1 to verse 16, Jude has been explaining to us what are, what are these people, kung anong ginagawa nila, what is, uh, what is awaiting their, their doom, the judgment that is awaiting them. Now, Jude is now admonishing the people, now what are you going to do about it? How can you survive in this time? How can you, how can you know them and what can you do against them? Here in verse number 7, it says, But, beloved, talking, about, uh, talking to us now, uh, the saved people, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, Alam na natin to. Alam na nila. Even those times. How did they told you? There should be mockers in the last time. Who should walk after their ungodly lust? This be they who separate themselves. What are they? They're sensual. And most importantly, having not the spirit. We must realize again, even Jude told them, Remember guys, you have been warned. Hindi ako yung unang nagsasabi sa inyo. Even the apostles of Christ have told you already that this is gonna happen. Now it's happening. Remember it. In, here in the Second Timothy chapter three, verse one, it says here, "This know also." Now Paul is talking. This know also in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. For this sort are they which creep into houses, same thing what, what, uh, as what Jude is saying, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Why? Because Jude said, having not the Spirit. That's why they're ever learning but never really understanding what they're doing. Never really understanding what they're saying. Kaya nga nagiging kulto. Kaya nga nagiging mga mali ang doktrina. Why? Wala naman kasi nag explain sa kanilang Holy Spirit. Okay? Now Jude tells us that now, these people are walking after their own ungodly laws. Going back to verse number uh, 18. Okay? They walk after their own godly, ungodly laws. Why? There's no other way for them to walk. Wala lang ibang silang lalakaran kung hindi yung sarili nilang kalooban. Wala lang kasi silang ibang, ibang wala lang nagsasalita sa kanila. Wala lang Holy Spirit. Verse 19 say, This be they, how do we know? They separate themselves. They make sure that they're different from you. They make sure that they're better than you. Okay, hindi ito yung mga nag-isolate. Kasi kung mag-isolate sila, eh, hindi rin sila effective, right? But they separate themselves, they make distinctions. That I am better. I am a doctor. I am reverend. I am this, I am that. Okay, they make sure that I'm different. Bishop ako, pastor lang kayo. Diba? Patriarch ako, bishop lang kayo. Kailangan iba-iba. They separate themselves. They try to, to kasi kailangan nila yon para respetuhin sila. Kung hindi walang ganon, hindi sila walang maniniwala sa kanila. Again, they're sensual. People who are just following their lust. What, what they want. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Yun yung kanilang goal palagi. Okay? That's why they do the ministry that way. Now, Jude tells us that you've been warned. This is the same message that I wanted to tell you this morning. You have been warned. And if behind this pulpit, we preach warning after warning after warning of these people. That's why, mga kapatid, if we are staying here, we have been warned. You've been reading your Bible. You have been hearing preaching about this. And you go back to your own place and do the same thing. What do you call yourself? What do you call yourself? 
Bahala na kayo mag-isip kung ano yun. Right? Because you have been warned. Para ba sinabi, hey, may tae dyan, wag, lang, wag mong apakan, inapakan mo pa. Di ba? Para ba sinabi, ah, ah, delikado dyan, wag ka tatawid dyan, tumawid ka pa. You have been warned. Ay, hindi, hindi lang sabihin na natin, hindi ko pa nabasa yun. Ngayon, alam mo na. Ngayon, sinabi na. Ngayon, na-preach na. Gagawin mo pa rin ba? Again, these things, hindi ko sinasabing uh, 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 mga apostates lang ang may ganito kasi minsan uh, nagagawa pa rin natin itong mga bagay nito. But, we don't live in that. Yeah. Hindi tayo namumuhay sa ganong klaseng pamumuhay. Maybe we fall into it once or twice, but we don't live in that. But these people, they, they live their lives that way. They have that, uh, uh, they use the ministry in that way. We have been warned. That's why, kaya nga po sa, sa, sa uh, starting from now, now that you know it, use your discernment, use spiritual discernment. If hindi pa rin, the, the question is, I don't know, maybe you're a very disobedient Christian. O wala ka talagang spiritual discernment. O wala talagang spirit sa sarili mo. That's why we have to wake up. Kaya nga po, I don't know what's up with these Christians. Who's saying that, hey, just don't speak anything about them. You're, you're, you're causing division. You're causing trouble. I just, maybe they don't read their Bible. Maybe they don't. Why? Because the Bible is filled with that example. Dapat hindi mo na sila nare-rebuke, bayaan mo na sila, pinatawad na ng Panginoon kasalanan nila. What kind of mind is that? What kind? Ka? Huwag mo silang husgahan ng Diyos ka, hindi nang uhusga. Yun ang sinabi sa akin. Di ba para ba? Hindi mo lang kung re-replyan mo o anong sabihin mo sa kanila. Ang Diyos nga, hindi nang husga, ikaw pa. So ano sabi hindi nang husga ang Diyos? You're not reading your Bible. And this is the time what, that we're living in. These are Christians. They are part of a close group who supposedly, uh, ang mga member doon ay theologians who are studying the Bible and lalabas sa bibig nila na huwag kayong umanghusga. And just read the whole book of Jude. Full of, full of judgment. Sinabi ko anong klase sila. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, hindi tayo dapat, ma- we should not fall into that modern narrative na let's just love each other. Encourage each other. We should not fight. Another very famous pastor told me, how can we win against the world if we're fighting each other? They are joining the world. You should fight them. You should always, you should tell them about that. That's why we have to wake up. We're already in these perilous times. And Jude is telling us um, uh, the instructions here. Verse number 20. But ye, beloved, how are we to contend for the faith? Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. That is the first thing. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and eternal life. And of some, uh, an eternal life. He, he, the, the, the Bible is saying first here, how, what are we to do? What are we to do with ourselves? Para malabanan natin to. First is to build yourselves up on your most holy faith. You have to be strengthened in your faith. You have to be strong in faith. How else can you battle them if you don't even know how to do it? Okay? We build up ourselves by studying and obeying what is in the Bible. That's how we build up ourselves. That's why we study. That's why we read. That's why we listen to preaching. That's why we meditate upon the Word of God. So that we'll be strengthened in our faith. If, unless you do that, there's no way that you can contend for the faith. Because you don't know what you're contending for. Right? You have to know. You have to study the Bible. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, it's really questionable to me. That's why if people who are not studying the Bible simply means that they have no uh, uh, tag dito, they have no plan to contend for the faith at all. No plan. Kaya nga po nagtataka ako, today, it is really, it's really disappointing. Habang nag election they're against, nung nanalo na, congratulations. Kasi, yari na, ano na to eh? May kapangyarihan na, kapit na. Yun ang nangyari. And then, you will read, nung, nung panahon na nanalo, eh, tas naging, naging speaker pa, makikita mo, one out of five sa, sa news feed ko, at least sa mga friends ko, are saying congratulations. None standing for the truth. Zero. Wala po. But I know there are people who don't agree with that, but they remain quiet. Why? Maybe, pagka sinulat nila yon, pag sinagot sila, hindi na nila alam pa paano sasagot. They did not build themselves up in faith. Baka sabihin ko, hindi ako agree dyan. Pag, pag dinibate ako ng magagaling na to, wala na ako masasagot. Wag na lang. Wala akong time dyan. 
But that's the reason why we need to build ourselves up in the faith so that we can, we can battle them. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. truth. Study to show thyself approved unto God. This, is, this talks about diligence, mga kapatid. Kasipagan sa pag-aaral. Hindi lang po ito para sa mga nagpipreach. Hindi lang po ito para sa mga pastor. It's for everyone to be diligent in studying. That means the most time that you spend on should be the study of the Word of God. That is the command. And I don't know who, who here can honestly say, I spend most of my time meditating upon the Word of God. Everyone is guilty of wasting time and not doing this. Why? And so that, uh, uh, um, what do you call this? We, so that we will not be ashamed. How can we not be ashamed if we rightly divide the word of truth? That's why uh, uh, we have zero chance against these apostates if we don't know our Bible. Because they're also knowledgeable. Madali ka nilang sagutin. Okay? Not only that you build yourself, kaya nga po, mga kapatid, it's imperative or very important that every time we do something, we base it on the Bible. Amen. Doon lang po tayo magiging safe. Para kahit anong tanungin nila, bakit yung ginagawa yan, sabi ng Bible. Bakit yan ang doktrina nyo, ito yung sabi ng Bible. Bakit yan ang pamamalakad nyo, ito yung sabi ng Bible. Hindi lang po as a church, and hindi, hindi pa po namin napipreach, uh, ay, napiprint, hindi pa po namin napiprint yung booklet na ginawa namin. But, one important thing, sabi sa, uh, sa ating Baptist Distinctive, is biblical authority. That the Bible has to have the final say in, in the church. But, importante po, mga kapatid, that it will not happen if the, the Bible does not have the final say in the individual members. Yeah. It's impossible for that to happen. Paano tayo magkakaroon ng biblical church if ang mga members hindi namumuhay biblically? Kaya nga po, it has to be based on the Bible. Hindi lang po, alam niyo po ba na hindi lang doktrina ang dapat i-base sa Bible? Kung hindi ang pamumuhay mo. Your everyday life, it has to be based on the Bible. Your decisions has to be based on the Bible. Don't decide based on anything else rather than, uh, uh, aside from the Bible. Has to be based on that. Lalo na po yung mga desisyon, mga kapatid, na napaka-importante sa buhay natin. Based it on the Bible. Hindi po sa emosyon. Hindi po sa sinasabi ng iba. Based it on what the Bible is saying. That is the only way na magiging safe ang desisyon mo. Kaya nga po, uh, bilang Kristiyano, di ba, napag-aralan natin kanina, anong ginagawa nitong mga uh, apostates, mga unsafe people? They follow their natural affection. Yun ang unsafe. Ang save, sunod-sunod ko ang sinabi ng Bible. Kaya nga lang po minsan, tayong mga save, ginagawa pa rin yung gusto ng ating laman. Kung ano yung uh, 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 madali. Kung ano yung masarap. Kung ano yung hindi tayo mahirapan. Kung ano yung magpapasaya sa atin. Kapatid, sabi ng Bible, unbelievers yung gumagawa nun. Hindi dapat kayo. God did not save us for us to be happy lang. God did not save us to have a comfortable life lang. God saved us to do His will and to glorify His name. Yun po yung ginagawa natin. That's why our lives have to be uh, according to the Bible. Kaya nga po hindi lang basta-basta kung ano yung gusto natin. Kaya nga po sasabi, ang na, uh, nakakapag-usap kami, daddy, kaya naisip ko minsan. Well, you know, members come to you telling you their decision to leave. Hindi po humingi ng payo, ha? Hindi po nagpapaalam, ha? Nagpapaalam. For me, ignorant people do that. Because you have the Bible. The Bible says, uh, uh, of course, first, base it on the Bible, yung decision mo. You know, kapatid, and, and derechahan na lang po salita, bakit sa mga nagbabala ko muwi, bakit kayo uwi? What is the first reason bakit ka uwi? It has to be, it has to be, ang goal mo dapat is to glorify the Lord. Yun dapat, kung hindi yun, mali. Kasi kadalasan po sa atin, aalis tayo based on financial reasons. That means, your life is being governed by finances. I don't know if mayroon po masasaktan, but it's the truth. Mas mataas ang sweldo doon, punta ako doon. After that, tsaka mo pala ko consider kung may church. So that means, pangalawa lang yung simbahan sa'yo. And until and unless you're sure that you're going to a place where you can be taken care of spiritually, properly, and there's a scriptural church, don't go. 
Huwag ka puputa. Why? Kasi alam ko naman yung katotohanan. Kaya ako mag-aral. Patuloy ako. Hindi mo kaya mag-isa kapatid. Kailangan mo yung simbahan. Amen. Kaya nga kapatid, uuwi ka. Alam mo yung katotohanan. But you're surrounded by people who hate the truth. Bibigay bibigay ka. Don't be so sure about yourself. Bibigay bibigay ka. Ang tagal ko dito. Narinig ko preaching ng daddy ko. Umuwi ako ng sandali sa Bible school. Idol ko na si Grace Grace nating but Grace. Iba yung pressure eh. Diba? Hindi mo kakayanin kapatid. So until and unless you know you're ready to stand for the truth and that you're going to proclaim the truth, don't go. I'm not saying that we're the only church preaching the truth, but there are churches out there just have to know. Kaya kung hindi lang din yun ang decision mo, why? Yung iba, uwi na ako, ayoko na dito. Hindi na ako masaya. Kapatid, bigyan mo lollipop para sumaya. Kapatid, hindi naman para sumaya lang eh. Bakit gusto mo lang sumaya? That is not our goal. Our goal is to glorify the Lord. It's not that. Kung binibase mo ang decision mo sa emotion, you're, not, uh, you're like a natural man. You're not a man that is uh, list, uh, doing the will of God. Kaya nga po, build yourself up on your most holy faith. Everything you do, everything that you're doing, every decision, base it on the Bible, study the Word of God, be diligent in studying. That's the only chance we have. Kahit po kay Timothy, yun ang sinabi ni, niya kay, uh, kay, ni Paul, yun din sinabi ni Timothy. Perilous time shall come. Anong chance mo, Timothy? To hold your ground. To remember what I taught you. And to keep yourselves, uh, and to teach that to others also. That is the only chance. Wala na pong iba. Kaya nga po kapatid, if hindi natin priority ang pag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon, your, your spiritual life will just falter. It will just die. Not only build yourselves up on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. Don't forget that. Praying in the Holy Ghost. That means your prayer has to be in that of what the Holy Ghost wants you to pray for. Kasi po marami sa atin uh, uh, prayerful, but we're only praying for what we want. Right? Alam niyo po, the way I see prayer is you're not asking God for something, but you're asking God to uh, help you accept His will for your life. Laging ganun. Kasi mayroon ng kalooban ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. And whenever you pray, you're not praying to change that will. You're praying to be conformed to the will of God. Okay? Now you have to continue to have that prayer. Uh, 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 pananalakin po sa Panginoon. And without prayer, we can never really, really battle this. You can know a lot, but you don't pray. That means you're not really relying on the Holy Ghost. You're not really relying on the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. How do we do this? By living righteously. You know, the love of God is always there. It's always available, but it can be affected if we are living riotous lives, if we are living sinful lives, if we are living lives that are not according to the will of God, then we, maybe we don't feel that love of God in our lives anymore. Kaya nga po, we do this by living righteously. Marami kang alam. Nag-study ka ng Bible, but it cannot be seen in your life. Wala rin po yun. Lalo, lalo lang masisira. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, sa, sa, sa mga tao na sabi na natin uh, tama ang, ang sinasabi, mar- marunong sa Bible, pero yung mga, kaya nga totoo yung sinasabi ng, ng pastor natin, yung mga tao na dumaan na sa paglaro ng kasalanan, lalo nang nahihirapan. Bakit? Master ang jablo ng, ng ano eh, uh, uh, he's the accuser of brethren. Ibabalik at ibabalik niya to discredit you. Yun din ang ginagawa ngayon nung yung prayer request ng ating pastor. But of course it doesn't matter. It is it's the Lord who will be who will fight for us pagdating sa mga ganung bagay. Not only that, but looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Always look towards him. Huwag po natin nahayaan na makalimutan natin that there's a future glory that awaits us. You know, in the midst of all this chaos, all of this uh, false doctrine na, 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 sa, sa panahon, sa, na nakapaligid sa atin, kapatid, if you look at these things, nakadiscourage. But if you look unto God into that future and, 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 and that mercy and that blessed day of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is a great encouragement. Ewan ko po kung na, nagkakaroon pa tayo ng ganong excited feeling. Yeah. Alam po, nung, tayo, nung bago tayong ligtas, as nalaman natin that someday we'll be in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaka-excite. Kaso nga lang, we, we notice that as time goes on, yung excitement na yun, parang nawawala, nawawala. It, just, it doesn't mean na hindi tayo naniniwala. Na, na, alam natin, kaso nga lang, pag yung bagay na alam mo na palagi, na, para pang wala na. Hindi na ganun ka, nakakagana. But we have to keep ourselves doing that. To keep on looking to that for the blessed day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have, how do we contend for the faith? Paano mong ipeprepare ang sarili mo, sarili mo as you contend for the faith? You build on your faith. You pray. Keep yourself in the love of God. And keep on looking to the future na darating ang Panginoon para sa atin. Now, what is the mechanics now? Paano tayong lalaban? You prepare yourself. 
Sabi dito sa verse, uh, na-prepare mo na sarili mo. Now you have to fight, you have to contend. Sabi dito, and of some, having compassion, making a difference. 23, and others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Kaya lang nga po natin maintindihan ito. We don't hate the people. We hate what they're doing. We hate what they're preaching. We have no right to hate the person. No right. Kasi hindi, hindi naman yun ang inutos sa atin ng Panginoon eh. Sabi sa verse 22, of some having compassion. Because people who are in the wrong, meron dalawang klase yan. People who are trying to fool others and people na mga naloko lang. Kaya nga po we have to differentiate that. People who were just fooled into that, kasi maraming tao madaling maniwala. So naloko, nadaya, we should be compassionate sa kanila. Kasi hindi naman sila yung naglalaganap ng mga bagay na ito eh. Sila ay nandun lang din, nadaya lang din, naniniwala lang din, nabasa nilang Bible, na kailangan masunod sa pastor, makinig sa pastor. So ginagawa nila. So have compassion to them. Kaya nga po kapatid, if you are not warning them, if you are not talking to them about these things, you don't have really, really don't have compassion towards them. Minsan po kasi, kasi ayoko na ng gulo. Huwag na lang. Kasi mahal, uh, uh, pamilya ko yan, mahal ko yan, gugulo. Hindi mo talaga sila mahal. Kasi the Bible says, you have compassion to them. You save them, you warn them, you contend for the faith. Kung talagang meron kang compassion sa kanila. Now, you do that, uh, 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 the Bible says, you do that as, uh, uh, as gentle as you can. For the man of God shall not strive. Right? You do that in a gentle way. That is how you do it. Because nadaya lang sila. But, verse 23, Others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted. Pa, paano mo naman itong mga ito? Itong mga mismo naglalaganap. Uh, paano gagawin natin sa kanila? 2 John chap- uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, ano gagawin natin? Receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Yung mga ito na, na laganap ang pagsasalita ng apostasy, pagpipreach ng mali, mga kapatid, sabi, neither bid him God's speed. Separate from them. Don't be friends with them. Don't have fellowship with them. You don't have to fight them. You don't have to, to have a war of words against them. But you can separate from them. Kasi po, nababasa ko rin na isang sinasabi ng iba, uh, uh, live peaceably with all men. Naitindihan niyo po ba talaga ibig sabihin nun? Hindi naman sinasabi ng Bible na awayin mo silang lahat eh. You can separate from them peaceably. You can, you can just post the truth, but hindi mo sila inaaway. Right? So, so sabi, ng, sabi ng Bible, don't even let him come into your house. Don't even say God bless you to them. Kaya nga po dito po nakakaroon ng conflict yung truth sa culture. Lalo sa ating mga Pilipino. Wala po kung kilalang halos Pilipino na hindi hospitable. Laging welcoming. Kanyari, sabi natin dumating dito si forward. Tapos nakiusap, pakisundo naman sa airport. Susunduin pa rin. Right? Kasi, hindi naman tayo ganun na tao eh, tayo mga Pilipino. But, yung culture dapat has to submit to the Word of God. Don't even say God bless you to them. Ingat po. Wag din. Kasi alam mong ginagamit sila ng jablo. Don't even, you separate yourself from them. You don't have to say, pangit mo naman. Hindi mo kailangan ganun din. Do it peaceably. You don't have to fight them. But you need to have a separation from them. Ang maganda, alam niyo po, nakikita ko sa separation as, as, as I continue reading that, is that you separate for the sake of the lost as well. Why? Sabihin na natin, na itong pastor na to, nandun siya sa lugar na sa Pilipinas. Tago na lang natin sa pangalan na ano, Pasay. Yung yung sa Pilipinas. Alam ng tao doon kung anong ginawa niya. But, you still fellowship with him. Anong siisipin nila? Pare-parehas lang kayo. Kaya nga po, you, you have to, to, to make a distinction. Tell these unbelievers, I don't agree what, with that, what they do. They might be the same denomination, but I don't agree with that. We don't do that. We are different. So for the sake of these people, kasi alam niyo po yung mga gumagawa noon, na sumisira ng testimony ng ating, ng ating uh, pangalan, na natisisod po ang mga unbelievers. Hindi po ba napapansin na lalo lang, hindi po napansin, ilang beses na po ako nakatin sa mga ganyang klase simbahan, yung kanilang mga kapitbahay, kalapit na barangay, hindi, hindi members yung mga yun. Bakit? Eh alam sila eh. Kilala sila eh. Sa nagkakali mga members nila, sa mas medyo-medyo malayo pang lugar. O yung iba naman, members, kasi malaki na yung simbahan. Pag may-ari na nila yung 7-11 sa kanto, so kailangan nilang 
uh, maging member to that. But, again, you have to, kahit na ganyan sila, meron silang power, meron silang fame, meron silang money, you have to separate yourselves from them. That is something that we have to do. Now, of others having compassion, making a difference, but as we separate from them, verse number 23 said, hating what? The garments spotted by the flesh. Now, you, what you have to hate are the things that they are doing. We have to be careful. Minsan po kasi, we can be emotional as we hate the people, person as well. Na, i-hate na rin natin yung mismong tao. Na, babasagan na natin, husgahan na natin, hindi na natin bibigyan ng open door. But the Bible is clear that you try to save them, pull them out of the fire. But, make sure that yung garments that are spotted, leave it there. Okay, leave it there. Wag yung kanila, yung, kaya ang i-hate mo yung mga yun, hindi yung tao. Try to save them, try to warn them, but not, but uh, don't hate them, uh, hate only their deeds, and then try to, uh, 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 dito, uh, let get them going in the, in the, in the correct uh, direction. So now, how do we, how, again, how do we fight? How do we contend for the faith? You don't just contend. Okay, it's clear that in verse 20 and 21, there's some preparation that you have to do. To be strong in your faith and to pray on all these things. And after that, there has to be a good attitude in contending for the faith. Do it out of love. Do it out of compassion. Don't hate the person. Hate what they're doing. Okay? And, and, as, and Jude ends in uh, these verses. Say here, Now, ito naman yung maganda. Unto him, God, that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. As we see this apostates, as we see what we have to do, it looks difficult. It looks hard. Lalo lang ngayon, sila yung marami. Tayo ay konte. But, the Bible says, you have to go into, in the power of God. Okay? Unto Him. Siya. And the reason why? We do it because of Him. We do it for Him. And we do it for His glory. But we do it with Him as well. Okay, hindi lang po tayo. Kaya nga po dapat hindi tayo matakot. Why? Because we're doing it with Him. Hindi po hindi tayo dapat mahiya. Amen. Why? Because we're doing it with Him. Amen. At lalo na kung tama sinasabi mo, huwag ka mahiya. Uh, hindi ko po alam kung bakit mas matapang pa magsa- magsalita yung mga mali kaysa sa mga, ta- kaysa sa mga nasa tama. And I really don't understand that thinking. Minsan, kung meron ako mamit na gano, I really want to pick their brain. What is the reasoning behind that? Why is it that they can stand idly by, while these things pass? I just really, I just really don't understand. Uh, pero, pero going back to our lesson, we do it for Him, to Him, for His glory, and with Him. And this is the only thing na kahit na mahirap, kahit na uh, hindi madaling gawin ito, we will do it with joy. Amen. Doon tayo magkakaroon ng tunay na kasiyahan. Kaya nga po kapatid, mahirap po to contend for the faith. Mahirap po na patuloy mag-aral. Mahirap po na uh, it's, it's really difficult to, to spend your time studying and studying and studying the Word of God. Why? Because your flesh will say that you're missing on a lot. You're missing on a lot. Instead of reading the Word of God, you can be enjoying your life. Instead of studying in this church, you can be, you can be, uh, do, you can be doing your personal goals. But we have to battle that. Why? Because true joy comes from doing the will of God only. Now, you can enjoy things. You know, lahat po tayo dito, Teachers. Ilan lang po dito hindi teachers? Yung mga administrator, of course. Tsaka sila, Cedric. Lahat po tayo dito teachers. And, sila po dito, raise your hand, if you honestly can say na talagang pinangarap ko maging teacher. Wala. O, siguro, ito sa mga nag-aaral ng education, syempre, yung mga, iilan lang. Kami nga nila, Ced, nag-aaral kami sa, ano, sa Limco Queen, tapos nung mag-graduate na kami, naisip ko, aral pa ng aral, teacher din ang bagsak naman. Huwag na lang mag-aaral. So, yun din ang nangyari. Teacher lang din naman kami. Siya, pero si said na hanap pa rin niya yung dream niya. Praise the Lord for that. Nakakapag-design siya. But, wala po sa atin talaga ng araw ng teacher. But we're here. We're teaching. We may not sometimes not enjoy it. At minsan, nandyan po ako sa, ano, minsan makakarinig ka, ako si Quirlson, patay tayo dyan. Minsan kasi hindi nakaka-enjoy eh. Nakaka-buisit yung mga bata. Hindi po mura yung buisit ha. Eh, ano Nakaka-inis. Nakapagod. Pero mga kapatid, we know we're doing it for the sake of the gospel. We know we're doing it for the sake of the Lord. We know we're doing it dahil nandito tayo sa position na kaya tayong i-sustain sa ating buhay. At the same time, nakakapag-serve tayo sa ministry. At the same time, we can learn a lot of the Word of God. That's why we're doing it. Wala po sa ating gumagawa niya kasi ang sarap maging teacher. 
Sino pong masaya naman maging teacher? Hindi naman po ganun kasaya. But again, you learn to enjoy it with the help of the Lord. Kaya ka po mga kapatid, know why you're here. You're here to study. You're here to learn. And if you think you're ready, then go and try to contend for the faith. But unless you do that, uh, uh, until dumating ka sa panahon na yon, while you're here, build yourselves up in the most holy faith. Build yourselves up. Study, study, study. Huwag po tayo matamad. And we have Bible classes. We have Sunday school. We have preaching. We have question and answer. Alam tayo ng alam. Aral tayo ng aral. Alamin natin ang alamin para someday we are well equipped to, to contend for the faith. And as we do that, mga kapatid, God will help us. Kaya kama po kapatid, let's, let's try to see that. Let's try to, as we have studied, finished studying the Book of Jude. Of course, marami pa pong doktrina dito na pwede natin mapag-aralan. I believe in the future we can do that. But that is how I wanted to present this message. We're living in the, li- uh, in the, in the time where apostates are preaching even behind the pulpits. And we have to be ready for that. We have to make it our life's goal to be equipped to contend for the faith. Let us go uh, to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you as, uh, uh, we thank you again as we finish studying uh, this book.